Whoa, it's the Seether Podcast. <laughs> That's gonna be like your reap or something. We're not. We need to have a musical intro. Who can we get to make a musical intro for the podcast? Because every podcast needs a musical intro. You have Milo. Um, He's a musician. Or my brother. My brother. I don't know. My brother. <laughs> Maybe. But I don't know. Welcome, everyone, to the newest episode of whoa the seat the chord podcast <laughs> uh, this is okay i'm trying to if you don't want to have your earring stolen don't leave it on the table put it on my earring are you putting oh my god she has hoop earrings and now she also has these little mini metal earrings also and she's hooking the metal earrings onto the hoop of the hoop earrings so i'm wearing earrings on my earrings double earring penetration what Nothing. (laughs) But yeah, for today's episode, we are going to be talking about our upcoming trip to North Korea. What? Yeah, we're going to North Korea, remember? That's not what I signed for. (laughs) No, we agree. We're going to go to South Korea and we're going to get on a tour bus and then go through the border to North Korea and we'll travel and visit there for a week. Nice. That'd be cool. And we're going to worship the great old Kim (laughs) Jong-un with his lesbian grandmother hair. Les- uh, uh. He looks like a lesbian grandma, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> lesbian grandma? Does that even exist? <laughs> Doesn't he look like like if you saw Kim Jong Un from a distance, you squinted your eyes, and be like, is that like some lesbian Asian grandma? Huh. Yeah, could be, could be. Anyway, <laughs> but no, for today's real episode, we're not going to North Korea. We might, who knows? But we will actually be discussing fur suits and why we love them. Because yeah. we've been trying to think of a topic for the podcast, and I wanted to talk about furry-centered video games, even though I've made top 10 videos and all, but talk about our history with playing video games as kids mm-hmm. that are furry-related. We might do it for the next episode. You think we could do that? Yeah. Uh, but instead... But today... Today we're doing fursuits and why we love them. Because I decided to talk about it. Anyway, so we're going to talk about fursuits, like, dissecting them in sections... Uh, we're gonna start with the head, of course, and like little details that we love about the fursuit heads. You sound like a biology teacher right now. Like we're gonna dissect the fursuit starting with the head. Exactly. So it's like this isn't frogs or something. <laughs> mm. Before you start, um, you, did you have to do that in high school? Like you had to do the dissecting of the frog? We were supposed to, but um, my classmates, um, they started getting all like crying and being like no we don't want to kill an animal so like then the teacher was like okay let's do a voting thing so we voted whether or not um Mm -hmm. we wanted to do it and like majority said no so the teacher was like okay we're just gonna study it (laughs) like read about it and so we didn't do it i had to do it but we didn't use a frog to dissect we dissected a pig Oh, yeah, you told me, like, the entire yeah. class. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if that's just, like, a Mississippi thing growing up in the deep south of the U.S., maybe. Mm-hmm. The thing is, they got it from Walmart. The te- the biology teacher, he got them from Walmart, the dead pigs. And I'm like, since when did Walmart sell dead pigs, you know? <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, I got a little grossed out by it. I still did it, but I won't deny that I got grossed out by it a little bit while trying to, like, suck it up and deal with it. And my other classmate who didn't get bothered by it all, he would... He took, like, the mouth of the pig and looked at me and be like, Seether, why are you so scared of me? Oh, my God. That's horrible. (laughs) Uh, Made some good bacon, though. Bacon. (laughs) Bacon's great. But anyway, yes, we're going to start off with talking about fursuits. First, we'll begin with the head, or technically the top of it, which would be the ears. Yeah. The ears. Ears. Okay, so... Or a head altogether. You want to do the whole head in one bit or go by each part of the head, like the ears, the eyes, the nose, the I mouth. I would rather go section by section because, for example, just the ears, you have different kind of ears. And I remember I even saw one fursuit. I think the creature was an otter or something like that. An so, otter? An otter. You sound like you said like an otter, like a no, cow. No, not the, not a cow otter. <laughs> uh, an otter. But the person decided not to give it ears. So it was just a round head with no ears. Hey, you know, more power to them. Anyways, um, you have small ears, you have big ears, you have the ears that move. Mm-hmm. I love those because they get this thing, it's for cosplay actually. It's called the Nekomimi hair, it ears. Oh yeah, Nekomimi. Yeah, and like, 
like quote unquote move depending on your mood. Like they move up, down, back. Aren't like aren't the Nico Mimi ears like the ones that like a bunch of anime fangirls are obsessed with wearing and stuff for like social media, Instagram and stuff? I think so, yeah. Damn. And I like some people. I saw like two fursuits so far that they got the thing. Mm -hmm. And they put it inside the fursuit and they take out the original ears and they just adapt it for their fursuit. So they have moving ears. Dang, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Uh, I would say like for ears or with me, I don't really have that much knowledge on ears. But when it comes to eyes, I won't deny that... Um, Cramchi is way more skilled when it comes to fursuits because she's more uh, you know, more knowledgeable when it comes to like arts and crafts because you could say like people who do fursuits and make them have probably have prior experience in arts and crafts and ones that are if you want to be at least somewhat good at making a fursuit or at least try it you need to have at least some experience with that beforehand. Yeah, you Which need they... to know how to sew, how yeah. to use uh, the hot glue gun and stuff. <laughs> Can you imagine like making a fursuit back in like the 1800s or something? Back when they <laughs> used, was the thing called when they made the cloth with it? Was oh it my god, I don't, I don't remember, but I know the thing you're talking like, about. <laughs> yeah. I think we watched everybody hates Chris Julius had it. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my god, that so, was, not even they didn't even have uh, scissors, I think. So, yeah. but, but I'm <laughs> rambling. I'm rambling. Uh, the eyes. I was saying, um, I'm not skilled in it, but one thing I always found interesting was when it comes to the eyes. I don't know if it fits for every first suit or not, but when it comes to my first suit, I think it's Cramchies, Chumis, and what's the blue panda's name? He doesn't have a name. It's just a blue panda. The blue panda. We'll call him the blue panda. <laughs> blue P. Blue P. Bloopy. That, that's okay, cool. that's your name now, Bloopy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they have this thing where you can have, they're slightly see through. I don't know if Bloopy, the blue panda, is see through a little bit. I think it is. A yeah, it is. And like pretty much every fursuit has that thing where there's just these tiny little holes on them so you can just barely make out what's going on. Yeah. And like, I didn't know about this. I thought everyone used the same materials, but it turns out there are different materials. And I can even, you can even stand up and touch the um, panda's ear. Mm -hmm. And the texture is different from Chumis and from Crunchies. And like, Chumi and Crunchy, they have the same material, but the bear has a different one. Like, blue, the blue panda, it feels more like a carpet. And mm -hmm. then Chumi and Crunchy, they're, they're now, they don't feel bad. But they feel more like, more delicate, like, fur pelts. Yeah, that too. There's different kinds of fur too. Is that that's something that not that many people know about, and I think the the most expensive and the quote unquote best one is fox fur. Really, yeah. Because it's the longest one, I think. Um, and then you you also have the different kinds of fabric that um you have long, medium, short fur, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Um. Um. About the eyes, you have different kinds of eyes because mm -hmm. they're realistic ones. Yeah. They have really small, tiny, round eyes. Mm -hmm. And then you have the little, small vent where you can see, like, the realistic furs. Um, mm -hmm. Their furs have the worst vision of oh, all yeah. because I... the holes are, like, this big. Damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It takes pute pain to make beauty, I guess. Yeah, like, my favorite kinds of fursuits are the hyper-realistic ones, but I, you have not, to know that it's... Like, is there a limit to how realistic for you? Like, it can't be too realistic? Mm, it would depend on the animal. Because, for example, I love birds, but, I don't know, I feel really weird when I see the realistic fursuits of birds. I can't do birds fursuits, and I have to be honest with you, the reason why I don't really, I can't really look at bird fursuits well... I'm sorry to Accurane for your old fursuit and everything, <laughs> but when the freaking, I think it was the Black Death happened, when they had like the little bird face mask, the crow mask things, mm -hmm. there, yeah. I think it was like the Spanish flu thing, mm -hmm. they they wore like the mask and everything with the bird beaks and everything. Yeah. It's creepy ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, so, and also I saw the movie The Birds as a kid. Oh, I don't remember that movie. You know, it's, you know what that is? Isn't that the one where birds attack a city and start yeah. killing people? Yeah, the horror movie about like, yeah, like when a bird start, a, like individuals get killed when a flock of black crow birds just show up and they kill them. Oh my God. Um, the thing that, I, that makes me iffy about bird fursuits is that like the difference between the beak 
and the furry like regular wolf or canine or feline fursuits is that when you open the mouth with the canine fursuit you had to open it really really big for someone to see inside so uh, when you have a fursuit that's a bird the moment you open it slightly people see everything inside and that's that's something that really makes me weird because it doesn't take that much effort to see the mouth. Yeah, like if, like if the bird first hit her yawns, you're like, oh, and then you see their real face and like, yeah. hey, what's up? Yeah. yeah. But um, it, I honestly, like going back to the whole realistic fursuits, I honestly have huge respect for people who uh, go out wearing their fursuits because they don't see anything. Some of them. <laughs> yeah. Because the version is really, really nice. Yeah. Next thing we're going to talk about is the nose. The nose. Yes. Squeaky noses. Hey, come on. <laughs> Say no. the nose. The nose. <laughs> like, sound like Squidward from like, the nose. Or the, or the current TikTok meme with Squidward. Why is everything chrome? <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything chrome? Um, <laughs> I don't like hard noses. Like, you see, Trumi has a soft nose and Crunchy has his, like, I don't know, resin nose? I hate those noses. I'm different. I like hard resin nose. I don't know. It just seems like more durable. Like, yeah, they are. Crunchy, I feel like it's kind of a soft resin nose. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember, like, I was thinking when I got my first suit me, when I asked Ducori, our first suit maker for both of us, uh, they asked, like, do you want a foam nose or a resin nose? And I'm like, resin sounds like it's going to last longer. And I don't know, maybe I'm turned off from foam noses because of... Forget Alex's fursuit's nose. This is the hedgehog fursuit. Remember? <laughs> and like, it's like one of those door stopper things when you hit it and like... <laughs> <laughs> what I like about the soft noses though is that some makers put squeakers inside them. Uh -huh. Or lights. So the moment you press the button or you, you squeeze it, it's going to go like... <laughs> and it's so cute. Yes. I can say that. I agree. <laughs> Next thing is uh, the teeth. How about the teeth and the tongue? Uh, I love the fabric uh, teeth. I don't like hard teeth again. And for some reason, my first suit has really hard teeth. The issue that I find with mine is that they fall. They fall off too often, mm -hmm. too easily. Mm, I could see that. I don't know. I'm different again. I like, I don't know. Maybe I prefer like, how about hard teeth that are permanently built into the fursuit instead of having to like just place them in yeah i would i would like to see that actually i i know that they do that with the realistic ones but when it's a regular fursuit when they use the resin or whatever material they use um sometimes they just glue it in place yeah and when they glue it in, pl in place over time it's gonna fall off and that's what happened with crunchy mm -hmm. She's just, missing one tooth because yeah, it, it fell off in a convention and it didn't, never found it. I know. She's like, hey, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I, I want to talk, though, about the tongue. Would you say that a tongue is required for a fursuit to look good? Yeah. Depends on the animal, but for the general public, like most people have canine fursuits or cats mm -hmm. or dogs, which are the most um, common species. The tongue expresses a lot, and I, I love the people who either make it out of Velcro or they put magnets so they can put the tongue anywhere they want and give it like... <laughs> I love there's one first that I saw the other day, but it had a magnet here on the side, so they would put the nose up so it would look like they're licking their <laughs> their face and it was so cute. I see. Um, I don't know, like... I can't even, I'm trying to think, and I can't even recall a single fursuit that doesn't, I've never seen have no tongue, you know? Like, I, I can't call, I don't think, I think it's pretty much a staple requirement. Like, maybe, like, I would expect maybe, oh, you don't need a tongue sometimes, because if the mouth is closed, mm -hmm. they don't have to see it. But, no, even if you don't see it most of the time, they still make sure to add the tongue, like it's a requirement, or a necessity, <laughs> yeah. or you're true. weird. Well, it's easy. The easiest part to make for a fursuit is the tongue, because it's a... A long strip that has a curve at the at the end, mm -hmm. or maybe it's like it's it's cut into two little triangles, you know, like yeah. crunchies. <laughs> all right, so I think we covered up basically all of the head. 
Let's yeah. move on to the arms, the length wait, arms. Wait, wait, wait. Before we move on, which one do you prefer? Fur suits that can move the mouth or fur suits that don't move the mouth? That can't move the mouth. I get a little bit weird. At, like, it, not necessarily all the time. If it's a fursuiter I haven't met or don't know who's underneath it, uh, then it's fine. But let's say, like, a friend. Let's say Alex gets, like, a really high-quality fursuit and is able to talk <laughs> when he speaks. I'm like, um, hi. It, it just weirds me out a little bit because, like, I start, like, when I hear the voice and the mouth move, it makes me just think of the real person. So, like, if I don't know you, then that's great. But if you know me, don't have a movable jaw. <laughs> And don't yeah. speak. Yeah. <laughs> I do agree. Like, I always wanted to have a fursuit that moves the mouth. And, like, now that I have one, I understand the struggle. Because you see other people move it and you think that it's cool. But then when you have one, you understand how difficult it is. Because most fursuits um, don't move that much. So you have to open your mouth really big yeah. for it to make sense with what you're saying. Yeah, and it's kind of weird because like you seem like an anime character a little bit when you talk. You're like, hello. <laughs> like, you're like, yeah, you're like, hello. How <laughs> are you? Know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, do like a do like a heat seeking thing while you're talking in first suit with the moving jaw and just see how the person's actualized moving is going. Hello. How are you today? <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, anyway, now yes, we can move. <laughs> okay, let's move on to arms. Like arms for fursuits or so. I know a lot of people tend to have just paws, which I did for a long time. They just tend to wear long sleeves with their partial suit. But we're talking full suits now with like, and you don't own a full suit though, but you own nearly a full suit with like mm -hmm. the arm links. So yeah. let's talk about the arm links, like the arm sleeves and paws. Well, as far as I know, when you buy a fursuit, and it's a complete full suit. Mm -hmm. They make two kinds of arms. They make uh, the arms that come with the fursuit. Mm -hmm. And you cannot take them off. So you, the only way for you to have the long sleeves of the fursuit is if you put the entire body on. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who make it detachable. So you can yeah, and then wear the arms like the blue bear, you know. And have like the string that connects both of them so you can never lose one. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I would like to have that, but I didn't. <laughs> but um, yeah, but typically, like people that don't have like the sleeves for the um, the first suit, they tend to also like you know just wear a long sleeve shirt, which I prefer that even if it's a hundred yeah. degree weather. But I I do that with you, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, besides that, um, we also have to uh, talk about the uh, paws themselves. Like, what kind of paws do you like? Or so, like when it comes to the fingernails, the the imprints on the inside. Chumi's paws are my favorite paws, and I would say that kind of paws are the best. And I, I mean, by that I mean I love the fursuit paws that everything on them is soft and squishy, even the claws. Squishy, squishy. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, I don't like uh, hand paws that have claws that are hard, or the paw pads are hard. Like some people make them out of silicon. Or something that is like squishy but still kind of hard, and I don't like those at mm. all. I can see that. I I personally prefer more like how do I say? I've only had experience with having hard shell paws, if that makes sense, with like really warm fabric mm -hmm. that are a little bit elastic all around. But I would like to have more softer ones. It wouldn't cramp up my hands as much. Typically, I'm more does. flexible. Like, I yeah. wish I had more flexible paws. And also, when I got my first suit. <laughs> I uh, I don't think I gave the right hand measurements, so it's like way too big for my hand. <laughs> yeah. Ducori probably thinks I'm like a seven foot tall person when I'm actually just <laughs> six foot one. I know I'm tall, but I'm not seven feet tall. So. <laughs> yeah, like if there's someone watching this video right now, I'm pretty sure they remember those videos where you tried to use your first suit on video. And the flinging and fucking the, thumb. Yeah, the poor thumb was like flinging all over the place. You don't know how many freaking comments people be like, "Oh, Sita, you look stupid with that." <laughs> just cut it off or something cut, huh? cut the finger off oh talking about fingers how many fingers do you like on the gloves i honest to god prefer four after trying on yours i think four is better than five yeah or maybe it's just because i'm biased because i have to deal with like one the thumb being so <laughs> fucked up on mine <laughs> makes sense i personally prefer four two over over five mm -hmm. because at least in my opinion five looks off 
It mm-hmm. looks really, really off. It doesn't also, look natural. And, like, when you watch a cartoon or something like that, like, very rarely do you see, like, cartoon characters have five fingers. Yeah, that too. It's, there are cartoon characters and animals in general. They, they look better when it comes to costumes. They look better with just four. Is there a reason that was a trend? Is there a reason they gave them four fingers? I think it was just because they were animals. Or, like, human characters in cartoons. There's always been, like, a rule, like, has to be four. I wouldn't say it's a rule, but like I think it's to make it easier. One one finger less to animate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, and then you see it in real life, and you're like, oh my god! I actually had. A, did I tell you about my guy who worked with who only had three fingers on one hand? Mm-hmm. It was it, weird. We called. Can I tell him what we? He was okay with it, and he even told us about it. And so that's why we started calling. But he called himself pterodactyl. Oh my god. Or no, no, or no, was it like raptor or the something? The raptor? Is the pterodactyl or raptor have three fingers? I think the raptor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so his nickname was raptor. Yes. Hey, raptor, how you doing? <laughs> Let's shake on it. We'll wait. Oh, yeah. Um, there are some other fursuit hands, though, that they're not as common because those fursuit animals are not as common either. And, like, those are, like, um, deer animals or birds. What do you think about those hands in fursuit? Deer raptors and birds? Deers, uh, like hooves, ho- hooves. I've seen, I saw that when Vine was still a thing, there was one fursuiter where they were like at a table and they looked pissed in their deer first and they were going like. Oh my God. And I thought that was so cool. I think when you make them that well designed and actually give like the realistic like hooves or fingernail taps to them, I think that's amazing. I do agree with you. That's yeah, I think, cool. but I th- I can imagine that's probably difficult to pull off with hooves, but um, I think it's I think it's cool. Um, yeah, I think that's the case for that. For like birds or like chickens or something like that, I've never yeah. seen fur suits where they give like the crow feet and hands. I can't. I don't know. Is there? Have you seen any with those? What I normally see is that they make the wings like really big feathers. Mm-hmm. And your entire hands goes inside one of the he- the feathers. Okay. So your hand is a huge feather, and like your hand is here, and like you have a huge piece of like uh, foam and fur around it. Yeah. That's cool. Before we go on to the lower half of the body, typically I want to discuss one more thing, which is actually I think it's kind of a more of a controversial one because I remember it wasn't necessarily like a fight on Twitter; it was more just like a disagreement chat on twitter i had with a rage hound mm-hmm. remember and i made a tweet talking about like how i don't really like fursuits that have boobs or breasts implemented into them or yeah. women well men have breasts too but women's breasts implemented in them and like she was kind of like well i feel like it's great and i just don't think they look real it's not really like a bad thing it was just a disagreement but like how do you feel about like breasts on fursuits uh, well, so far I have not seen one that I like, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't just, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, that you shouldn't do it mm-hmm. or that it's wrong. I just, I, I personally also feel like it looks off, uh, especially when they make him too big. Yeah. Cause the problem is not, I guess maybe, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, go on. Okay. The problem I feel like with breasts on fursuits is not necessarily that it's like not something you should do it's just virtually everyone that does them makes them bigger than virtually any woman on the planet has them as yeah either that or one thing that makes me feel like it's off is the separation in the middle some i don't know why but they sometimes they make the separation like too big it's like yeah like when it comes to like a woman let me check (laughs) <laughs> like they there have, is a little space in the middle but yeah, it's like a little, tiny like, yeah like i'm looking like there's like a little space here and they kind of point but, outwards but they kind of make it look pointed like inwards or either direct <laughs> forward and it's not <laughs> supposed to be like that and also they make them like d cup maybe even f cup or something and like yeah. most women don't have that <laughs> you know what i don't like is hiding the the seams like you should as a fursuit maker um some people or at least I expect most of the good or higher quality fursuit makers to be able to hide all pretty much all the seams on the front side of the fursuit, which is the one where, which is the side that's gonna be on the pictures most. 
and what I saw on the breasts when they put them on fursuits is that most of the time the seams are visible and mm -hmm. I don't like that and like it looks like they literally just put a piece of foam to pretend like they, they have breasts mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so I guess maybe like the lesson learned for fursuit makers there are people that commission them is like hide the seams mm-hmm and don't make them too unrealistically big, I guess. Yeah, well, the unrealistically big would go onto the clients because you know most yeah. of the time it's a, it's the the. Um, it's you know usually like customers always right, so like they just do it because the client wants it like. And like way. lonely virgin guys, <laughs> <laughs> which is like ninety five percent of furry. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Like, but um, also, one last thing. I feel like I'm sounding like such an asshole. It's just, this is all fun and humor, you know, right? Yeah. But the last thing, make the boobs point in the right direction also. Yeah, sometimes it looks off. Or like they're going to collide or like pew, 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 mm -hmm. pew, pew. Now that we're talking about the chest section of the first seat. Oh, like the, the muscular ones? Yeah, I was just going to ask you, what do you think about those? Um, Now... Let's let's be honest here. There are a lot of fursuiters out there that have these full body suits that have the chest puffed out and the muscles and the tones, and they even implement like a t a six pack into them and everything. Yeah, they do. And let's be honest, guys. You, you know you don't have that really. <laughs> Most don't. Yeah. Well, I don't mind. I would, I would look at it and be like, okay, so that person is into muscle. So I'll yeah, just keep, keep on my, with my day. When it bothers me, and I've, I've only seen it done once, done this once, but I saw one fursuit. But it had the chest and it was fine. But then the back, it was like a 12 pack. So mm -hmm. it was like lines, 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 lines. And I was like, where do, what, how? Like, is, is, is that anatomically possible? No, it's impossible. And they had like 10, 12 lines like horizontally on the stomach. And I was like, that's impossible. And that looks horrible. <laughs> it just goes all the way through. God. <laughs> yeah. It would never end. So like they were so muscular, they developed more, more packs. <laughs> they develop muscles on top of the muscles. Yeah. God. But um, I don't know. I guess maybe like they're fine. I would just say, like, if you if you want to have a muscular fursuit, I would say more so just try to develop, like, the front chest pecs on them. but And, and don't put as much focus on, like, the six-pack. And don't yeah. go over six. <laughs> just make it six, six maximum. You can do, like, a two-pack if you want. Right? Or four or ten-pack. But, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, chest area uh or the mid torso midsection area mm -hmm. let's move on to the uh legs and i and i guess you know like legs let's talk about um typically the normal legs and also digitigrade yeah. Dig is it digitigrade or digigrade i think it's i think you read it digigrade digigrade yeah. yeah um i like the ones that are like normal leggings you know but uh, there was this trend, I think it started in Russia, actually. Russian well, There fursuits. was this one Russian fursuit maker, and uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to know who I'm talking about. I personally do not know their name. I think it's in Russian, so. Um, but this person makes fursuits that are really tight on the skin. Mm -hmm. And it looks too off to me. I remember I saw a lioness, and like, it looks really cool on the arms. But on the legs, for some reason, it looks too off. Like, you could see the outline of their actual half part of their body. Yeah, it's like it's like they made yoga pants. <laughs> but for but le furry leggy pants. You yeah. Know? And I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind if it's, you know, a, li a little bit loose. Yeah. I would prefer if it's a little bit loose. Mm. Now, what about the digitigrade legs or the ones? And I think you have it for your cramshy suit, like the... She uh, did. Thick. <laughs> yes. Um, do they have? Um, what do you think of those? Where they kind of try to implement like more 
curvaceousness with them. I don't think that's a word, but you know, the digitigrade legs where they try to like extend the kneecaps and then ones where they try to give them more thickums where they like expend the thighs and stuff like that. Or like kind of like they have like a kangaroo shaped hips or something. I like those. I really like like when someone, at least a person maker gets creative and they get like out of the norm which is the soft curves and they mm -hmm. try to do their own things i really like that like mm -hmm. if you look at the bigger fursuit makers most of them have pretty much almost the same style mm -hmm. which is just soft curves no hard lines and rinse and repeat yeah so i saw one fursuit maker um it doesn't look good on all their fursuits but they make it like angles like the knees are angles and like it makes most of the fursuits looks like cartoons and i love that they look adorable <laughs> yes they do yeah um so that would be it for the legs let's go mm -hmm. on to the last thing the feet or the paw feet. the feet paws the paws as far as i know um i think there are two kinds of feet paws mm -hmm. i think um the indoors and the outdoors the indoors are the ones that the feet the bottom part you have the little you know the paw pads and the the little toe pads too mm -hmm. uh they're all made from fa of fabric so you can't really go out and walk on it because you're gonna like break it too fast so that's why they're called indoors but they look adorable it yes, looks like do. your feet are plushy plushy feet yes. and they're bouncy typically and i won't deny Alex, he won't. He doesn't have. We keep talking about Alex. It's a mm -hmm. friend of ours. He's the guy that's in a lot of the uh, convention videos that I make because he's my friend in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, he's a furry. He wasn't, and then I don't think he's really like a furry. I think he just kind of wants to fit in. But if he wants to, then join the club. I just the thing is like he's more of like a Sonic fan that just feel that hangs out with furries. If that makes sense. Yeah. He has a Sonic fursuit thing making, but hey, but I won't deny the one thing I like a lot about his suit. There's those paws, those like sonic feet things, because they're so soft and you can put them on and you can just run around in them. <laughs> it's funny. But um, I like, when it comes to my fursuit, um, I don't know if it was the same with your feet paws when we both got it commissioned by the same time, because mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, both her and I, um, Cramchi and I, we got our fursuits commissioned at the same time by the same maker. That's actually, I think, almost how we met. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, I like how when it comes to the feet paws, she used like a croc. Mm -hmm. Was it a croc fully or was it like a flip flop? Or I would say croc. Mine's were crocs, yeah. And they they developed it over it. They like super glued the um, the fur over it and put the padding in it and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. To make it, and I think do they do that with a lot of fur suits? Do they typically use like a croc or a slipper. What I know that they they do use shoes mm -hmm. most of the time. They use shoes. And uh, I think that the fursuits where they don't use shoes, they call them uh, slippers or something like that, or fursuit mm -hmm. socks or something. But it's a, it's a feet paw just with, with no shoes inside. Mm -hmm. um, but 90% of fursuit makers use shoes. Mm -hmm. And I even saw a few of them where, uh, because they don't want to make it wrong, they actually just ask you to mail them an old pair of shoes of yours uh -huh. that you wouldn't mind getting turned into a feet paw. Yeah, but Ducor was <laughs> nice enough to just buy two pairs of Crocs for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What I love about the, the Crocs thing is that it has a little hook mm -hmm. thing that goes on your ankle. Oh, yeah. So that the feet paw is never going to come off. Yes. Because mine, the <laughs> shoe size is one size bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of loose. But the moment you put the hook on on the Crocs, it stays still. Oh, no, I'm different. Growing up, Back when Crocs were way more of a trend. Were they a trend back when you were like, when we were like nine or eight years old, like uh, yeah. 10, 13 years ago? Some teachers even had them at school. Hey, I don't blame them. But they were cool back then. But I won't deny, I didn't, that hook on them, I I didn't like having it on the back because it would always rub into my the back of my heel. Yeah. And it would just the burn from the rubber. Mm -hmm. So I would always put it in the front and they would always slip off. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah, but... I would say, like, at least if I ever learned to do fursuits, which I'll probably not because I just don't have the time or full interest in arts and crafts, I would say making the feet would probably be the most fun or it would be the easiest for me to learn. Yeah, it makes sense. Because the whole f f shoe thing and also using the shoe as, like, a mold. A mold would be pretty easy. Mm -hmm. 
One thing that I saw that is starting to become kind of a trend among fursuit makers is magnets. They're making eyelids with magnets. They're making like interchangeable eye colors. 3D. Where you, you take off the eyes, you put on new eyes, and they're different colors. Um, and what I see that they're doing now is um, magnet bottoms mm -hmm. for the feet. So after you're done using the feet paw, you take off the magnet part, you put it to wash, and then you put it back. Man. So you don't have to wash the entire feet, you just wash from the bottom. Technology advancement of fursuits, you know, <laughs> inner AI with the first, like, what if they get, are gonna, this probably might be a thing in the future, 10 years, 20, I don't know how long from now, but a couple of decades, but 3D printing fursuits. Oh, it's happening already. Really? People are making bases. Dude, freaking 3D printing, how long, how many year, how many decades do you think we're away from the average family having a 3D printer in the house? Oh, I see it pretty soon. Like, like another a decade or two? are doing that, yeah. Yeah. And there's a tons and tons of websites and free downloadable 3D things. It's that's cool. Like how do you print it if you download it? Like you have to go to a 3D printer somewhere. Like how wait can, how I don't know. I haven't ever seen one in person. Like how easy is it to access one? Like where can you find one typically? Uh, well, I could take you to a shop here when it opens, you know, after yeah. the quarantine um, is over. Don't say the magic word. The funny virus. <laughs> the funny virus? <laughs> oh, my God. After that is done, and this, I hope that store is open again, they, what they do is they just print things. They don't make 3D designs for you. They're like, we have, they have three sizes of 3D printers. They have a tiny one mm -hmm. that they were actually showing off at a convention where they would print out things that were like this big mm -hmm. like as as big as a, a rubik's cube how long would it take to print out like a couple hours uh it depends on the size we're still like like technology like we're still at a point where like we can print out we're already using 3d printers to like make like legos and like you like plastic utensils and things yeah. like that and it's still like taking we're still at the point where it still takes like a couple hours to make a couple of them yeah but uh but yeah. They're really slow. I remember they someone bought something at, from them, and it was just a keychain. It was like this big, and you would see the machine go like this slowly yeah. from left to right, left to right. So, I, I pointed something in this room that was probably made with a three D printer. This, uh, I could have been done. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, I don't and, know. And uh, I see there's there is a big future for uh, for making with three D printers. The problem, though, is, uh, at least personally, I don't like hard parts on the fursuit, as, at least on the head, because I see the head as a helmet, so if anything bad happens to you, you have a soft thing to protect you, but like resin or the, I don't know what's the name of the material 3D printer use, but those hard materials, they turn it into kind of a hazard you yeah. know i can see that definitely mm -hmm. um i will say though the only kind of crazy thing and kind of weird thing with 3d printing has to be the fact that they're 3d printing some food now like i heard the chicken nuggets yeah they make chick is that true would you say that's true the, yeah it's like still experimental but it's cool that makes me not want to eat chicken nuggets any <laughs> chicken McNuggets at mcdonald's anymore yeah. you know just imagine entire persons being 3d printed <laughs> I don't know. I know you can. We went to a convention. Me and Alex. We went to the 2018 Wizard World convention. You could like spend a hundred bucks and get a little miniature uh, figurine of yourself. Oh, that'd be It'd cool. take a couple hours and it's a hundred bucks. But yeah. Anyway, we're rambling too much. Um. Uh, I think that's overall for first suits and everything. I think it's uh, pretty good. The last thing I want to mention before we head out today is just kind of a few more like unique things and twists for first suits. Like, mm -hmm. I want to discuss the first one. I would say being like people that implement like technology into the fursuit like did i show you that i think you've seen it the person who put like a music speaker in their fursuit oh what's the name uh beauty of the beast it is was the like name of that fursuit it's mostly like yellow and black colors with their suit yeah like, it's it's uh, their so fursuit cool. is based off a roller coaster yeah from i don't know where it's from but roller like coaster tycoon no, no, no! It's a real roller coaster in the real world. It's something. It's called like something like Smiler or Smile. I'm only about it's but, probably from like Six Flags or something. 
something like that. But like the roller coaster is yellow, gray, and black, and their fursuit is has the exact same colors. And for some reason, this person decided to put speakers. Mm -hmm. But the story behind it is that they bought it from a fursuit maker, and the fursuit maker was like, "I could try, but I've never done this." So the fursuit maker just put the speakers on. Mm -hmm. They didn't activate it or, or connect it to anything else. So this person learned at home how to do like the cable stuff and they edited their own fursuit so that they put the speakers themselves I won't, that's on. awesome i won't deny that that might be a potential fire hazard waiting to happen but <laughs> <laughs> it'd be epic but not epic that they would <laughs> burst into flames i don't want that to happen but. And then other suits, I would say, um, the people that implement, like, LED lights into them. Yeah, those are really cool. Now, that is a fire hazard waiting to happen. <laughs> uh, One thing I love um, are the eyes. They're, as far as I know, it's only one person that does it, and it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. And they make eyes that follow your real eyes. Yeah. And it's lights. They are, like, these, like, LED light screens. And... Uh, they follow your eyes. So if you close your eyes, your first it's going to close its eyes. If mm -hmm. you look up, it's going to look up. And it's really cool. The only issue that I see is if it runs out of battery, your eyes are going to go like, turn mm -hmm. off. <laughs> like, <"Zoo." laughs> Yeah. And also, um, the Primogen. Have you ever seen it? No. They are fursuits that they are based off of these like imaginary creature. Uh -huh. And their face is a screen. It's literally like a black screen like this. And it, it looks like a circle face. Mm -hmm. You know the circles? Yes. So it's a triangular black screen. And I don't know how they did it. But they do this like faces with that. Let, let me look it up because it's hard to explain. It's all right. But I get what you're saying though. Um, that it was like pretty much putting in a like huge like technological spin on it oh not the vaporwave stuff yeah but, 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 but let me show you this is how they look like oh those and it's... they put the lights and they have this little switch i think they have it on their hands and it changes the expression I, yeah i was thinking of something else when you said like circular face but now it looks like the circle stuff you know yeah they look like circles like i think they they were kind of based off of the circles in terms of the shape first suitor is becoming full ai <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, next i want to talk about is um glow in the dark fursuits fursuits where they have the fur where like it's one color but then you turn off the lights and they're like glow in the dark have you seen those yeah i've seen them like uv uv, UV sensitive or something mm -hmm. it's really cool to see them in the like party those are first it's for partying you're like you're gonna be the center of attention because mm -hmm. you're gonna be like shining <laughs> yes. that's pretty cool and the last one i want to talk about and i kind of like i would like to have you ex to like kind of explain to the viewers on this and especially to me too because i don't really understand how they do it but like people that tend to like want to have fursuits where they like kind of change them in like size or width or something like that how do they kind of build like those shells or something for fursuiters that are kind of like bigger and stuff what do they tend to do oh so the big fursuits mm -hmm. i remember i saw blue dragon and i had to look for the picture mm -hmm. give it to you so you can show it now but what they do is the foam it comes in different sizes so they get the thicker they can get mm -hmm. and they um they give it a sphere shape they cut it in the sphere shape and then they glue it and the foam is so thick and so hard that it's it, it keeps the shape mm -hmm. so it's pretty much empty inside there's a, a big like air space between you and the foam but your first is going to be round it's going to look squishy I know some of them do it like are able to do it pretty good, but then there's like some I see like when I go on Twitter when a convention is over and they tend to be the ones that get the most attention, but the ones that tend to do it really bad are those ones where like you see them and it's just like a giant ball for like a stomach or like it's inflated or something. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, there's that, you know, that I don't remember his name. It's like a green and white one. And I was just like, that is so bad. I, I know who you're talking about and I, I'm not trying to be dissing on the person I'm pretty sure they're a cool person but like I just don't it looks weird you know a lot of people actually like that that first year you were talking about kind of started a little bit of drama 
I because f- people were like, oh no, this fursuit maker is making fetish fursuit now and stuff like that. And like, I think that's dumb. I'm like, the fursuit maker is. You're at a furry convention. They want, you're at you know? a furry convention. What do you expect? Yeah. And I think that fursuit looks cute. One thing I don't like about that fursuit specifically is the bottom part of the tummy. Mm-hmm. How they connected the tummy to the body looks kind of off. But mm-hmm. like, apart from that, I think it looks adorable. Okay. Um, well, I think we pretty much covered everything really in terms of like fursuits and also like, I kind of feel like I've gotten all the kind of more unique, like kind of out there fursuits as well. Did I miss out on anything? Not as far as I know. Okay. So that's pretty much this whole episode of the Seether Podcast. <laughs> Do it. The Seether Podcast. <laughs> We're going to get copyright from the freaking podcast I'm copying that off of. Yeah. They don't know who I am, so that's fine. But any last words before we head out? Be like SpongeBob and be like, I, I'm going to head out. I, we're going to head out. <laughs> we? What is this? Communist uh, Soviet Union or something? Yes. Da, 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 no, it's copyrighted stuff. Da, okay. Um, well, do your research before buying fursuits. Yes. Don't mm-hmm. get scammed. Yeah. Like, I might get into like a little bit of drama. No, here no, right no, 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 we're out. We're gonna... No, but I, I had to say it though. Look up the name of your fursuit maker because there are a few fursuit makers that are popping up right now. Their art looks amazing. Their fursuits are amazing. But there's one that was a safety hazard because inside the fursuit there was metal, sharp metal pieces. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you put on the freaking suit, and then by the time you take it off, you're just covered in cuts and blood and you need stitches and stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I end up like Marshy. <laughs> my poor kitty. But yeah, like, to avoid that kind of stuff, to avoid getting cut or hurt by your own first who please look up the name of the first who maker you want to buy things from. Yes, indeedy. 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 <laughs> So anyways, thank you all so much for watching this episode of the C Seether Podcast. The Seether Podcast. But um thank you guys so much for watching. Uh remember to check out um my Patreon and remember to uh donate if you want to get some exclusive content also remember to also i forget all the stuff i do say um also donate to the coffee you want to do like a small time donation remember to like comment and subscribe check out my main gaming channel seat the cord games and my no commentary gaming channel seat the chills all in the link in the description down below check out all of cram cheese crap also in the description yes i'm now doing twitch streams more often i thought you were doing facebook streams oh there's crazy people outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you all again so much for watching. I've been Seether Cord. I've been Grinchy. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Dun, 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 dun. Goodbye, everyone. Love you. We found what? the watering. Oh, we're so pack. close. It's okay. We'll get it next time. Yes. On the next episode. On the next episode. Episode. <laughs> episode. Uh, I'm gonna throw it. I'm gonna throw it in the complete opposite. I want to see how far it goes. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs>